Here are six ATM mistakes that will kill your business before you even start. Team CV, Victor here with Celebrated Victories. Give you guys another video and I hope you're doing well. Hope you guys are staying blessed. In this video, I'm gonna tell you six common mistakes ATM business owners make so that way you don't make these same mistakes. So if you wanna be successful within your ATM business, be sure to check out this entire video. First thing that we're gonna talk about is buying used ATMs. You never wanna buy a used ATM, especially when you're just starting out. The reason why is because you need to know what you're doing. You wanna make sure that the ATM that you're purchasing is EMV compliant. You wanna make sure that's ADA compliant as well. You also wanna make sure that you're not getting charge um, money that you shouldn't be getting charged when purchasing an ATM. Obviously, it's gonna cost you some money, but you need to understand how much money you should be paying. You need to ensure the ATM that's getting delivered to you actually has all its components. So when you're first getting started, you're not gonna know what components are really inside an ATM and what an ATM is supposed to have and what it isn't supposed to have. So if you purchase an ATM from eBay or Craigslist or somewhere and it's missing components and you don't even know that it's missing components and when you try to start your own ATM business, and put it in a business owner's location, you're gonna run into issues and you're gonna be frustrated. You're gonna wish that you listened to this advice. The next mistake I'm gonna discuss is lying to a bank. So if you didn't know, you have to get an ATM business bank account in order to start your ATM business. But when you're doing this process, it can be very difficult because there are a lot of banks out there that don't wanna work with ATM business owners. So you have to know what you're doing. You have to know what to say when you're approaching banks. I do provide scripts to my students so that way they know exactly what to say word for word verbatim um, when they're looking for an ATM business bank account and I also give them a long list of 200 banks that accept ATM business bank accounts across the country. One nugget that I'll throw in there for you guys when you're going to search for your ATM business bank account and you approach a bank and they mention the word MSB or they say we don't open MSB accounts let them know that the ATM business bank account isn't an MSB account. So the third one is going to be paying a locator too much money to find a location. So if you didn't know you could actually go out and hire someone to go out to different businesses, call around and find an ATM business location for you on your behalf. And then you pay them and then they'll give you the contract or they'll give you their information so that way you can get the contract signed. Be weary when you're doing this process. I know lots of people that have done this process and they gave someone $400 or $500 or even $300 so that way they could go look for a location. All that person really did was find a business that's willing to put an ATM inside their location and the ATM didn't do well whatsoever at all. You don't want this to happen to you. Make sure to come up with some type of agreement when you're discussing these things because you wanna make sure that if you put an ATM into a location that they're putting, you know, they're giving you, at that point you wanna make sure it's gonna be profitable because you don't want them to be giving you a location that's only gonna be getting 500 people in that location a month and then your ATM isn't gonna perform and then you're gonna be losing out on time and you're gonna be losing out on money because one, you're giving them money, one, you're purchasing anchors to both the ATM down and things like that and time is money so we don't want that to happen to you so let them know hey if you find me a location and I put it in there and I keep it in there for more than two months or three months I'm willing to pay you or you can give me the money back I know it's something that can be challenging to do but this is something that you want to make sure you're doing so that way the locator is doing a good job on your behalf so let me know in the comments below how much do you think you would charge a locator to find you an ATM location and if you're ready to start your own ATM business I do offer a free training in the video description you may also find it in the comments below where you can see my master class I do offer an opportunity to one person every single month to join my pay training 100% no price completely free to get access to that be sure to check out the free training below the next one I'm going to talk about is long-term contracts with a processing company so a processing company is a company that you need to utilize in order for the transactions to go from your ATM and into your bank account and also from the person that's utilizing their ATM from their account to your account so this is really what makes all the magic happen and how an ATM needs to be to function so when getting with these companies a lot of these companies like to put you in a three-year or five-year contract where you can't leave at all they could give you horrible service they could have issues with their company and you're still locked in you're charging you processing fees and you don't want to be going that route I do offer my processing company that I use to my students where they get 100% auto surcharge for all their ATMs. They are also in a contract free agreement where they can leave whenever they want. They can go to a different company. They can you know, not utilize their service anymore if they ever needed to go that route. So just remember when searching for a processing company, be sure to ask all the right questions and do your due diligence. Don't just speak to one, go to as many as you can and find the right one for you. 
Okay, the next one I'm gonna talk about is pretty common. And this is gonna be underestimating the capital that's needed to start an ATM business. In reality, you're gonna need at least $4,000 to begin when you're doing this the traditional route. Now, you can get a credit card, you can get a loan and things like that to get your ATM business started. I didn't go that route. I do know some people that actually have. You gotta be careful with this because it's not something that you wanna just jump into really quickly without really knowing what you're, you're getting yourself into. You can do this as well, but you gotta be careful because you wanna make sure that you know what you're doing. You wanna make sure you have a solid plan so that way you're ensuring you're making that money back with the credit that you have. One advice that I like to give is have a goal on when you wanna have your ATM business started and try to save as much money as you possibly can to attack that goal. Another thing you could do is just look for things around your house that you don't use or you rarely use and try to make some capital off of it by selling it. And when you do these things, you're one step closer every single day to starting your ATM business. This one that I'm gonna talk about, a lot of people run into these hiccups and these issues and I'm gonna let you know so that way you don't do this. When setting up an ATM, be sure to get it delivered to your house. You don't want to have it sent to a business owner where you're going to be putting the ATM in. And the reason why is because once it gets sent there, they're going to have to sign on your behalf that the ATM has got delivered. Now, when this happens, a few problems can arise. The ATM could be damaged. There could be missing components to the ATM. And once you sign that documentation, you're pretty much, or they sign that documentation, you're pretty much accepting the fact that the ATM was delivered to you properly. That's just one reason why you want to make sure it's delivered to your house the other reason is because when you're trying to install it especially for the very first time you're not gonna know exactly what to do entirely and you don't want to be inside that business trying to install it trying to figure things out for the very first time and then you know you're looking funny you're looking like you don't know what you're doing you know they're about to close you're trying to rush and then you're gonna have to come back the next day so to avoid all those things have the ATM delivered straight to your house get it inside your garage do what you got to do make sure it's working properly it's all set up and then all you have to do at that point is bring it to the business owner's location, bolt it down, and then you're good to go. Okay guys, so those are six common ATM mistakes. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to go to the video description and check out my free masterclass. I promise you, you're gonna get endless value within that training.